Welcome to the Life of Excellence podcast, a podcast dedicated to the ever-evolving understanding of what it means to be human. We'll delve into fields of longevity, health optimization, neuroscience, explorations of consciousness and meaning in life. Thanks for joining me on this ride, and let's get on with the show. Welcome to this episode of the Life of Excellence podcast. And today I'm going to go into some interesting stuff. I'm going to talk about how exercise and the gut and the brain talk to each other. This is a new concept and people are just revealing the research on how exercise, the microbiome and the brain and even the immune system are an interactive network that communicate constantly and guide our health. Exercise science has traditionally focused on individual physiological systems, muscular, cardiovascular, or nervous system, but emerging research indicates that there's a web of interactions between physical activity, gut microbiota, and neurological function. The gut microbiome serves as a crucial intermediary between exercise and brain function. During exercise, the body produces lactate and other metabolic byproducts that influence the microbiome. These microorganisms in the gut, in response to these nutrients, produce short-chain fatty acids and other metabolites that can cross the blood-brain barrier and influence neurological function. The gut microbiome as an endocrine organ that responds to exercise stimuli. Think about it that way. Now, lactate emerges as a key molecule in the system's approach. Once we considered lactate merely a waste product of exercise, lactate now appears to be a crucial signaling molecule that connects physical activity, microbial metabolism, and brain function. The communication between exercise, gut, and brain isn't unidirectional. The vagus nerve has communication channels that go between the gut and the brain, and they go in both directions. There's also the immune system signaling, and this adds a whole nother layer of complexity. So exercise communicates with the immune system, producing anti-inflammatory components, and then you have the gut interacting with the immune system that can create pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory components. And the brain also through psychoneuroimmunology can interact with the immune system. So this complex network of interactions is getting more and more complex, especially adding in a new variable of the microbiome. Now, if you look at exercise, it also triggers the production of something called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF. It does things like neuroplasticity, which is the production of new neurons. It promotes synaptic function, so it increases the connections that these neurons have. Neurogenesis, the growth of new neurons, especially in the hippocampus, this region of the brain that's associated with memory and emotion. And it protects against neurodegeneration. BDNF is one of the top things that we want to preserve as we age because the production of it drops off as we age and it really has strong protection against that neurodegeneration. Another aspect of BDNF is the regulation of mood and emotional resilience. It's been linked to well-being. BDNF has been associated with depression, anxiety, and stress-related disorders, suggesting its role in emotional regulation and resilience. So keeping that BDNF level up keeps that well-being high. It protects against depression, anxiety, and stress. Now we know that when we exercise, muscles produce a substance uh, that goes to the liver and gets converted to something called irisin. Irisin then goes to the brain and causes massive productions of BDNF. But interestingly, gut bacteria can influence BDNF levels through their metabolic products, creating a three-way interaction between exercise, the microbiota, and neuronal health. Now let's talk more about the immune system's role here. The immune system serves as another critically integrated aspect of this network. Exercise modulates 
immune function, reducing the inflammation. The gut microbiome also heavily influences immune responses, and both exercise and microbial metabolites can affect neuroinflammation, common factor in neurodegenerative disease. So when it comes to looking at just exercise, we need to consider more than what we're doing there. We need to consider the gut, we need to consider the brain, and we need to consider the immune system because these are all interrelated systems that are communicating in multiple ways to guide the system into optimal performance. And if you have dysfunction in one area, it can really throw the system off. So one of the things we know is like, Everybody wants to take acromancia for uh, brain health and aging. It's the magic microbiome bacteria that uh, a lot of people are supplementing now. But exercise is one of the best ways to increase acromancia in the gut. As we feed that lactate to the gut, there's a shift in the microbiome into a much more aging positive neuroprotective microbiome that is communicating through the vagus nerve, that's communicating through hormones that are secreted. I mean, it is truly the gut is another organ system that is producing chemical signals that go through the blood, that go through the nerves, that go through the immune system. So the bottom line here is that saying exercise is good for your health is really limited. You've got to really take into account many things here. You want to make sure that you have a good, healthy microbiome. You want to make sure that you are practicing techniques to keep the immune system really healthy. All of this working together, you get exponential improvements in cognitive function, cognitive protection, and protection against neurodegeneration in the brain. And we see a lot of this in the practice, and we see people that will focus on nutrition and exercise alone. And that is very limited. It's not giving you the full benefits of what's possible in the human system when we look at it as this complex adaptive system that can be optimized so easily by really paying attention to all the systems involved and really helping them to work together in a harmonious way. This is the importance of systems health. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to leave a comment and maybe add some suggestions for future podcasts and be sure to follow. Thanks. See you next time.